Welcome to Ron's Workbench. Hey everybody, I'm Ron. Welcome back to my workbench. Uh, before we get started today, I want to first apologize for the lateness of this video. Um, last video, uh, number nine, as it was posting, or uh, probably about 15 minutes after the video actually posted onto YouTube, uh, my wife and I were in a car accident. Uh, we got rear-ended. Uh, praise the Lord, nobody was hurt. You know, some vehicle damage, my car got totaled, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. But I just wanted to apologize for this video getting posted later. Next thing I want to talk about is I want to do a couple little shout-outs. First shout-out is to my adopted big brother and everybody's cousin, Vinny, over at BNSF 6951. Uh, if you've never visited Vinny's page, I suggest that you go over there. Uh, Friday nights, he does a live stream. Vinny is truly a master at building with styrene. So go over, check him out. He does a mentor over at the Nscale group on Facebook. And if you really want to learn how to model with styrene, please check Vinny's channel out. The other shout out I want to give is to Todd and Brett Riley, Wiley, sorry, at HO Scale Customs Podcast at HOScaleCustoms.com. Brett and Todd are a father and son team that do an awesome podcast. It posts every Friday, and uh, they also have a Facebook page, a YouTube page. Go and check them out. Excellent people, fantastic scale modelers. Go and check them out, and sorry, Todd, but... Uh, this is not a beer. Uh, hey, buddy, bring me a tab. I can't get you a tab unless you order something. Then bring me a Pepsi free. Hey, you want a Pepsi? You're going to pay for it. And the other shout out I want to give is to Steve Brown over at It's My Railroad. Uh, Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific time. Tracksmac, go over and join us. Uh, Tracksmac on YouTube. Great show, a lot of fun, something different every week. And, you know, Steve is a good friend. And I want you to go over if you're not subscribed to either Vinny or hoscalecustoms.com or Steve Brown over at It's My Railroad and Tracks Mac. Please go over, check them out, subscribe, and enjoy their content. So, today's video, we're going to talk about shingles. In particular, how I did the shingles on this kit. The shingles I used are from Casey's Workshops.com. Um, have to give a big thank you to Jason Jensen, who turned me on to them at Jason Jensen Trains. Uh, go check out his channel as well. He has an awesome tutorial on how to do the shingles. So go over, check him out. I will put a link to his video and tutorial in the comment section of this video along with links to the shout outs that I did earlier for Vinny, 
for Brett and Todd and for Steve Brown. So without further ado, let's get started. Before we get started on the shingles, I want to go over some of the things that I did with the Miracle Chair Kit up to this point. Um, it comes with a very nice sign. Um, I could have just put it on as a straight sign, but I decided to make it distress and try to make it look as it was painted on. Um, you can see here that I used the technique that I went over earlier in the one video where you sand the back of the uh, sign till it's very, very thin. Um, yes, I did notice uh, that it is put on a little crooked at the bottom. We'll just write that up to the sign painter being totally drunk when he painted it and the bosses at Miracle Chair refused to pay him. Um, if you look at the sign a little closely, you'll see that the edges are, in this photo, are still a little fuzzy. Um, I do need to clean that up, and I'll go over that technique that I'm going to try and use on that in a later video. So let's move on to the assembly portion of the building. I did something different. I wanted to try something. Um, I used Gorilla Glue Super Glue to assemble the walls. Um, it worked, but I will never do that again. Um, it really doesn't give you a lot of working time. It does not dry immediately uh, because of the wood, but it makes it rather difficult for you to position the walls. Okay, so let's move on to the shingles. Um, as I said earlier, the shingles came from Casey's workshops. These are the standard shingles. They come two to a pack. They are five by eight sheets. And as you can see, they come in a gray color. And along with the shingles, you also get three solid strips that you can use for your starter rows and for a ridge cap. So the first thing I did to prep the shingles was to spray them with this Cryon Color Max Sand Dollar Tan. After letting that thoroughly dry, I then took uh, pastel chalks and a brush and I use a uh, pastel black and a brown and a little bit of an orange red oxide color and I dry brushed the shingles. So this gives the shingles some texture and some depth. You start laying the shingles you first put one of these starter strips down on the edge of the roof and then just begin gluing down layer after layer of shingles alternating them so that they overlap on the edges okay so uh, as you can see i've already started laying down some shingles already i have one side completely done and I'm going to show you me finishing off this side. Now, I'm using the Weld Bond uh, glue to do this. And uh, I'm going to be totally honest. Uh, I don't think this was the best glue for me to use. I think I would have been better off using Elmer's Full Strength White Glue or uh, even uh, Aileen's uh, Tacky Glue. The, and you'll see here as I go along, the Weld Bond does not give you a lot of working time. And uh, the way my hands shake, because I have a slight tremor, it really made putting on the shingles, uh, I'll just say fun, how about that? Um, Doing shingles is almost like doing therapy. Um, once you get into a rhythm of it, you just get going. And 
it's it's a good thing where if you just want to zone out and work on modeling shingles uh really puts you there and like i said you can see here how much uh trouble i'm having because of uh the tremors that i have in my one hand and also you can see that the weld bond is not giving me a lot of working time i should have had i used elmer's I think I would have probably been able to put down at least two to three courses of shingles at a time. Uh, the weld bond really dried quickly. It absorbed into the um, roofing material rather quickly, and it was really a pain in the butt to do. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm trying to offset each row of shingles one to the right hand side and one to the left hand side and once everything is dried and set up i'll then go ahead and trim off the excess shingles and i'm being careful here to make sure i'm overlapping the shingles correctly now, when I do a close-up here and I show you the pattern of the shingles, um, you'll notice that I did a very tight pattern. I probably could have overlapped them less and uh, used less shingles, but I think if I would have used a wider pattern, I don't think it would have looked uh, in scale properly. Uh, it's a small building. So if I would have done a very uh, wide pattern on the shingles, I really think they, it would have looked out of scale. And again, that's just my opinion, and I'm going by appearance. Now, I'm eyeballing the overlapping of the shingles. If you wanted to... You could easily measure the width of the shingles, measure, measure the width of the overlap that you want, and mark on the roof each line of shingles, which would give you a reference point to lay down each course. Okay, one tip I'm going to give you while you are doing this. Keep a damp paper towel or a damp cloth with you and make sure that you wipe off your, any glue from your fingers because you do not want to get any glue on the top of the shingles. And uh, just trust me, it makes life a lot easier. I will tell you this, 
This would have been a lot easier if I didn't have stubby fingers. Did I ever mention that having sausage fingers and fine scale modeling do not really mix? Now, I know it's not really clear, but each time I put down some of the glue, uh, you'll see my one hand go off the side of the camera. What I'm doing there is I have a damp cloth uh, paper towel sitting on the side there, and I'm grabbing that and wiping the glue off my uh, fingers. Now, I'm just using scissors to trim uh, right now, but once I'm done, I'll use my X-Acto blade and I'll trim the shingles even with the edge of the roof. Okay, so I'm going to apologize right now for taking the building out of the shot. But what I'm doing right here is I'm going over each row of those shingles and I was adjusting them. And as you see, as I'm getting closer and closer to the ridge, your working room uh, starts to diminish. So getting very close to getting to the ridge of the roof and I really wanted to be careful on how much glue I put down and make sure when you put the glue down just put a little bead uh, going horizontally across the roof area and use your finger to spread it out make sure you get all the way to the edges so that those edge shingles stick down to the roof and do not want to curl up. And the other thing you can see that I do is I only lay down like three courses of uh, shingles at a time and I'll give them some time to uh, set up and dry. And as I said, the weld bond does not give you a lot of work time. Um, gonna have to try the next set that I do. I'm gonna really have to you try either, like I said, the Elmer's full strength or the uh, tacky glue. I think that would give me a little bit more working time and you can see even though I'm not I mean 
the, I'm shooting this in real time. So anything that you're seeing, you can see that that uh, glue really absorbs into the roofing material and the, uh, the work time to lay down your shingles is very diminished using the weld bond. And that made it a bit of a pain. Now, one of the things that might not be completely evident is you do end up with a lot of spare shingles um, as you're making your cuts, uh, smaller amounts of shingles and single shingles as you're cutting. Don't throw those away. Get yourself a little container and save them for a future project. So here I am, I'm getting ready to lay down that final course of shingles. I'm um, putting a little bit of glue on the tip of my finger because I don't want to get a lot of glue on the shingles that I've already laid down. Um, you don't want to ruin all your hard work here on um, getting some exposed glue. Um, you know, it really detracts from your finished product and you've put all this hard work into it. So, you know, be careful. Take your time. Uh, there is no rush. It's a hobby. It's not a race. And you want to do a nice job. So what made this r really difficult is I'm actually working on a reverse uh, side of the roof because I wanted you to see how I laid down that final course of shingles. So now I have a tiny little gap at the ridge. And what I'll do there is I'll take one of the other solid pieces of the shingle and I will make that into a ridge cap and we'll lay that down on top. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a sharp razor blade and I'm going to open a vein. I mean, I'm going to trim back uh, the shingles and make them even with the roof. Okay, so now that I have the roof trimmed up, I'm taking the razor blade and I'm just going under individual shingles and lifting them up uh, to give the roof a more worn look and a more three-dimensional. I'm going to also take the razor blade and I will break and chip a few of the shingles as well to help it give that worn outlook. Okay, so let's get ready to make the ridge cap. I'm going to take one of the straight pieces that's supplied with each sheet of shingles and 
we're going to have to score this and so we can fold it over to make the ridge cap. Okay, so to make the ridge cap, we're going to take a straight edge and I'm going to lay it in the center of the strip of roofing material. I'm going to take the back of my X-Acto blade and I'm just running it straight down to make an area where I can make the crease. And I'm going to use the edge of the ruler to um, bend over the paper to make a V. And then once we have that done, uh, we can put it on the roof and make it a ridge cap. So now that I've got the uh, bend into the roofing material. What I'm doing here is I'm gently just pinching the two pieces together to form the uh, V for the ridge cap. And just basically lining it up here and seeing how it'll fit and making some small adjustments. And then once I'm satisfied, we'll go ahead and we'll glue this down. So I applied a little bit of glue to the underside of the ridge cap. And I'm just placing it on the roof and um, working it into position to where I like it. And sorry, this is off camera, but I'm using the X-Acto blade to help position it where I'd like it. And, uh, took a brush and straightened it out. And there you go. Now all we have to do is let it dry and we can trim it up. So there you have it. That's how I did the main roof on the Miracle Chair Company. If you like what you're seeing here on Ron's Workbench, please consider subscribing to my channel. Um, thumbs up are always appreciated. And if you click on the bell icon, you can be notified every time I upload a video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you later. On the next episode, we're going to take some AK Interactive Rust Effects Colors for a test spin on the next Ron's Workbench.